Join us tonight on the front lines of New York Med, where the fight to save lives is fought case by case. It all happens here in New York City, home to some of America's best hospitals, places off limits to cameras. God damn it. Until now. We got a pulse. He's alive. I want to be able to eat and go out and have more energy and definitely want to be able to gain some weight back and put some more muscle on because I, I definitely lost a, lost a lot of weight being sick. When I can eat whatever I want, I want a big steak, a cheeseburger, I want some sushi. Crohn's disease is an inflammatory disease of the intestine that gives people a lot of pain when they eat and therefore a lot of weight loss and malnutrition over time. I'm ready. I'm a little nervous now that I'm here, but it's, it's all a step in the right direction. Facebook status. It's been a long wait, but the day is finally here. Only about an hour left, and I trust it all to a very charming Italian man. Good morning. Yeah, tell me, what, what do you eat? I gotta tell you, I eat a lot of eggs. Lot <laughs> Scrambled of eggs. eggs. You don't mind if I don't join you for dinner? <laughs> Dr. Michelazzi is not only the chief of surgery here, but he's a real world expert in gastrointestinal surgery. So we got to give you steaks and potatoes direct into your veins mm -hmm. so that uh, you start the recovery now. Well, I think that dressing is quality of life. Uh, dressing is the ability to eat. Jesse is 18, and he cannot go out and eat uh, pizza with his friends with pepperoni. Hey. How's it going? Good timing. How you been? I'm all right. Did you gain any weight on the TPS? Uh, two pounds. Two pounds? Yeah, big old two pounds. Jeez, man. The operation we're doing today is a procedure that involves removing the inflamed and diseased portions of the intestine and then reconnecting those healthy segments. He's looking forward to getting over this and living his life. But you have to be brave for him. You can't fall apart in front of him. All right, cue the music. There we go. So what are you listening to? Black Keys. Oh, okay. He's told me that there's some sort of a hip new band, and I admit that I'm powerfully, <laughs> profoundly uncool. I'm gonna end up putting on uh, Pink Floyd for when they start giving me the drugs. Now that's a band I know. I have to go out to comfortably numb. That's that's how it goes. We don't need no education. A surgery like this, it's it's not like an appendectomy. It's, it's not like the anatomy is known. It's not like what we find when we're gonna go in is entirely understood. Open the incision a little more. Very extensive disease. Um, as we suspected and we have known for a long time, could I please have a uh, three or silk? The operation we're doing essentially involves removing the diseased portion of the intestine and sewing back together the healthy segments. Whew. This is tough. So we have uh, 20 different uh, strictures. A stricture is a, a narrowing or blockage in the intestinal tube. This is gonna be a long procedure. God knows what we're gonna do. Hopefully, Dr. is gonna go in there and repair as many strictures as he can and remove as little as he can get away with removing. So we gotta preserve as much as we can. Every inch. You know, all this scar tissue is because of the previous uh, procedures. Knife to Dr. Tao, you cut my finger and your academic career is done. Yeah. Dr. Michalassi's words are, I'll see you in three years, and you'll be four inches taller and 20 pounds heavier. OK, take him to a recovery room. Yes, sir. I'll go talk to the family. Can you imagine to be the parent of a 18-year-old and, uh, you know, having your kid under surgery for six hours? So I'm going to make a drawing here. Today, we really uh, have achieved uh, everything that we wanted to achieve uh, without uh, losing a lot of bow. This is for him. Do you know okay. a place where we can get it framed? Can we get it signed? Absolutely. Yeah. Jesse will uh, grow with time, will gain weight. And I'm very happy that I was able to save all this much bow. <laughs> I've gained some weight and actually grew an inch for the first time in a few years. And I have some energy. I'm feeling pretty good. This has given him his life back. 
When I first left the hospital, I emailed Dr. Mikulowski and I told him that I had a big bowl of pasta as my first real meal. And I remember he was very happy about that. Oh. Even though she's about to turn 19, she's still my baby. You know, when you get closer and you start to get nervous. Like in swimming, you just get nervous right before the race. Sleeping peacefully. This is the map of the blood vessels of her arm. We got to know what to stay away from. Give me our road map. Here is Arbor swimming one of the competitions. Since the moment she was born, she was very active. Even the first cry was so loud. <laughs> we got the phasing tip. We're working our way to find the end towards the hand. I don't know where that connection is. And in her incredibly distorted anatomy after the accident, I certainly don't know where that connection is. I think the course of the nerve is gonna be like this. You have to dig up a lot of her arm in order to get to the place where we were gonna start to try and fix things. You know, you don't wanna cause more damage. Because look, because the median nerve down here, so is it safe to go right here? The scarring is extremely intense, extreme. How about trying to find a needle in cement? Did you guys get the nerve stimulator? The beginning was supposed to be four hours, and the nurse told me it's supposed to be six to seven. Like, I almost feel like if I could just sec on top of the nerve. There's a very significant risk that I could cause loss of sensation and or movement of that third finger, and that would be the worst outcome. Damn it. Is that what she said? She was injected from a car? Yep. At 1.10, the surgery started. And it's 8 o'clock right now, and it's not done. I'm scared. I'm nervous. I don't know what to say. We are closing up okay. the skin. We've replaced her nerve from this point to here. Abra, okay. open your eyes. Good job, you're done, the surgery's all Barbara, push against my finger, push. Good, feel me touching you here? I was worried that, you know, we may have compromised that, but I'm glad to see she can still use it. Cannot wait to see her now. I'll give her a kiss. <laughs> that was a uh, very, very challenging case. I could do with a few less cases like this. For sure. I'm getting my keys. I find it hard to keep track of everything because I just had a baby and I'm just at home instead of in the hospital. So I've done two liver transplants in the seven days since she's been born, so I feel like I've missed two sevenths of her life. Is this your baby? This is your daughter. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like you. Yeah, that's, that's the problem. Time away from my family is pretty hard, but it's worth it if I could be helping other families that are out of options. My thoughts keep running away like a child running through a field. What keeps happening to Mr. Kufelt is he keeps getting something called cholangitis. And when that happens, you get bacterial infections. He becomes very sick. He has to get admitted to the hospital. So we need to get him transplanted before one of these episodes catches up with him and kills him. Hello? Hi, is Jonathan there, please? This is Sherry. Sherry, it's Dr. Kluger, how are you? Oh, good, how are you? Well, thank you. So I got a great liver for him. Oh my word, are you kidding? I'm not kidding. Like now? Like now. Oh my word, are you kidding? No, I'm definitely not kidding. Oh my word, when do we have to be there? Um, you know, don't don't get into a car accident. I want you to get here safely, but you should um, start heading out. Oh, my word. Okay. The hospital where the donor is is only a short flight away, and our surgeons are en route right now. We'll go lights and sirens. This is actually very exciting for this guy. He has been fairly debilitated from his disease, so it's a good time to actually do his transplant. It's like nerve-wracking. <laughs> We're going to be here a long time. <laughs> it's like an emotional roller coaster, to say the least. Before we know it's a done deal, they need to inspect the liver so that we know it's a go. Whoa. 
it's going to be bumpy on the departure. You don't, you don't get a lot of motion sickness, do you? Huh? No, I usually don't, but I'm scared of flying a little bit. Are you really? A little bit. Oh, man. Admissions, Admissions for Kufel. I... Transplant? Liver transplant? You're going to admit it, though, right? Admit it. Sure. My mom was convinced this was going to happen after my daughter's wedding and not before. So it sounds like if, if we go as scheduled, I can walk her down the aisle and at least do the dance. OK. Have you come to grips yet? Or? It's kind of still, uh, still not real. Yeah. Um, the risk from the procedure, the death risk from the procedure is 7% over one year. Um, the risk of a complication is about 30%. I am in uncharted waters. I'm jumping in with both feet. And uh, should something happen, I'm not afraid. We're on a happy note. I'm not going. Well, then stop saying okay. that. Because I'm, I'm not ready. I don't care what you're, <laughs> I don't care what you're, you're ready for. I'm not. So you're not going anywhere. Okay. You're not going until I tell you you can go. But it's so typical. That's right. <laughs> I know it has to be this way. Put your hand right here. So you got to be very gentle, OK? So the liver, nice and soft, and it can easily rip. You don't want that. Make sure there's no evidence of cancer anywhere. It doesn't look like it. So we will call them and let them know that this is a good liver and that we should take. Hello. Hey, man. This is, it's a beautiful liver. Nice, sharp edges. It looks, it looks very nice. He does have a left hepatic coming off the gastric. That's about it. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, brother. We'll see you soon. Bye. So they just visualized the liver, and it's okay. perfect. Beautiful. Exactly as expected. So the six to eight hour operation, about three of that is getting your liver out, but we would never take it out and disconnect the blood vessels until the other one was Shows in it. the room. That'd yeah. be a lot of finger tapping, huh? Where is that? Yeah, yeah that'd be a problem. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like that commercial on TV, I mean to tell you, if it's not here, I'm out of business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Everything will be very, very good. This Take care of things, okay? I will make sure. Watch well, over everybody. Make sure Sherry's okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I love you. I love you too, Goodbye. But we won't hear anything till about four in the morning. I don't think. I'm trying not to think about what could go wrong. This will be the longest six to 12 hours of my life. It's always nice when you're starting before midnight. It's nicer to finish around midnight than to start around midnight, I'll tell you that much. We're giving him a healthier liver. We're taking away a lot of the risks that he had, but we're also replacing that with some new risks, like heart attack, stroke. Haven't operated on somebody with this much muscle in a long time. Okay. Sit to the doctor. Your hands are steady today, right? Your vision is good. Sure, he doesn't like the way anything's done. He's probably going to complain. We may need to go a little bit further on this side. I'm not sure. You're not going to like it, I don't think. Because I think his liver is... Vi it's, it's still going to be a struggle because the liver is so... It's so deep. The incision's great, but the liver's so far back. Yeah, okay. This is strange because it's... Particularly impractical, I think. If there's cancer, we can't use the liver. Now, what are we going to do if it's a They said it was concerning. It is. OK, let's uh, wait. We stop. It's frustrating. I've never seen a patient leave the operating room without a liver. It's a benign cyst. The liver's good. Let's do it. It's good. Liver is good. I mean, the, there's no cancer, so we can go ahead. What? 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 This is not my, my sutures. These are supposed to be here. We're going to spend a whole night here. We need the right instrument. It's going to be tough. This is a one-shot thing. If it fails, the patient dies. The liver's about to come out. 
Okay, leave her out. They have just really sunk down behind his intestines and behind his stomach. Is the uh, flush ready? So now I need to get the good liver. Okay. Looks great. Okay. You said there's no easy transplant. I am kind of just wishing the time would go by faster, because right now we're just waiting for someone to walk in the room. Okay, reperfusion. Yeah, touch, 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 touch. I'm gonna go home now. <laughs> <sighs> okay, let's go see the family. Look at this. I like ships. And? And everything went very well. The liver is perfect. It's very, it's very nice liver. Working and... It's working, it's making bile. So we're good, we're happy. Days are moving so fast that I can hardly keep afloat. Let's blow this cookie factory. It was a little bumpier road than I thought it would be, but it's good to be done. I was afraid I wasn't going to make it there for a while to, to walk her down that aisle. Bye. Bye. Take care, darling. Thank you for everything. John knows everybody a little too well. <laughs> He's been here a little too long. We're not in the car yet, but so far it feels really good. <laughs> feels great. The smell of the outside. You almost want to stand in the rain? Yeah. You know, I've got a daughter that's getting married, and I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be a celebration of many things, not just a marriage, but a life. And he's going to get me going. No, I'm not. Today is my daughter's wedding. You see, it is the day that I've been focused on ever since I went in for my transplant. You can just be going up. You're my first. I wear a white coat, but I'm a woman and a mother first and foremost. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Oh, you look great. Uh, Your hair looks good. It's growing. I think genetically, women are nurturers, and I think we're great physicians. I like when you do it. I feel like I get a really good exam. I don't feel anything. As a woman, I understand what a woman with breast cancer goes through. I'm glad you're seeing the radiation doctor next week, because if you weren't, that's what I was going to, I was going to send you to her anyway. OK. One out of eight women in the United States will be diagnosed with breast cancer, and about 40,000 women a year will die from the disease. I was terrified because I wasn't prepared. Mentally, I wasn't prepared. Andre Brown is coming to see me because she was newly diagnosed with breast cancer. I see here that you just went in for a routine mammogram, so you didn't yes. feel anything on your breast. No. Okay. Sit on this table here, and then take your arms out completely. Put your hands on your hips like this, and I'm just going to take a look at you just to see if you're even on both sides. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to feel around your neck. Yeah. So you look pretty even. Now, I'm going to check for a nipple discharge. I don't mean to hurt you. Look down. Okay. Is that new? You've never seen that before? No. Okay. And so, Andre, have you seen your mammogram films? Or no, you? I have not. You can see here that there's all these abnormal calcifications yes. in this area. OK, so, so is it the dots that are the calcification? Yeah. And so the calcifications can be an early sign of an early breast cancer. Mm -hmm. It's quite extensive, so I don't think you're a candidate for the lumpectomy. I think you're going to be better served with mastectomy. My first reaction was, OK, this is my sentence. This is it. I'm going to die, and in the near future. Yeah. But actually, we can't get 100% of the breast tissue off. So even after mastectomy, I continue to follow you forever. I'm a single parent. My son, James, is 20 years old. It was incredibly shocking. And it, you know, it makes you th think about a lot of things very quickly. It's so important to me that she's healthy because um, I need that rock in my life. So this is a little bit of a balancing act where we have to remove as much of the breast tissue as possible, but not too much that the skin actually dies. So you're in great hands. Klaus did my anesthesia when I had the babies. Oh, wow. He did both of the epidurals. Oh, my God. That's so, I love, so great. I love him. He's fantastic. So many of my patients ask about my children, and I think part of it was that 
you know, babies are just such a sign of new life, and it's so positive and hopeful. So does your son know about this? And I was so protective of him of saying the word cancer. And he said, it's just so advanced now. You're going to go in and out of there and say, what happened, mm -hmm. you know? You are going to do great. If we removed all the tissue from underneath the skin, the skin would die. But you don't want to leave too much that she gets another breast cancer in the future. It's just a struggle to get the breast out. Let me go up above here. So this is actually her breast here. OK, Mia, this is good timing. We're actually ready for you. All right. Andre came to me for um, reconstruction. You know, like anything else, it's rare to find a woman who's perfectly um, content and satisfied with the way she looks and the way her breasts look. OK, so we'll want to use a saline-filled implant to give her the augmentation that she wants. Right. I'm gonna collapse it like a mushu pancake. Okay, so now we're gonna fill it up a little bit. I think it looks great. You never know what the tissue's gonna look like, and it can make or break the outcome with the reconstruction, so, you know, it all went great. I think she's gonna have a really nice breast, ultimately, so, so that's great. Gunshot wound. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Oh, oh. You want to lay him flat? You're going to feel another little stick over here. It's just me drawing some blood. Who's running? My name's Katie. I'm one of the nurses. I'm Dr. Nugent, OK? All right, what happened? I got shot. OK, no pain in your belly. No pain in your chest. Let's get ready to roll him here. Oh, One, two, three. Feel just a finger in your bottom, holes, okay? okay? Just stay up like this. Let me know if any of this hurts. Any pain there? Uh, we got to find an exit wound. We got to figure out where this bullet went. The bullet's right here. Oh, it's there. You know, this kid is so lucky that this thing hit him in the thigh. And there's no better place he could have been hit from. There's nothing there except muscle. He will have no permanent issues from this. You feel like you need some more pain medicine? Oh, no. Steven's going to get a souvenir. The bullet's going to stay in his leg. Usually the bullets are traveling so fast that they're sterile. You know, he gets a dose of antibiotics and a tetanus and then just let it heal. This is his mom. He'll, he'll tell you. What happened, Stephen? We were walking to the store, and then we got shot. I moved out of that neighborhood so you, I can give you, you a better life. Worse. I guess it's my fault I got a bullet in my leg. That's right. Because I told you not to go in that neighborhood anymore, and you went. I didn't get the hell out of that neighborhood for you to get shot. I'm fine. I'm Dr. Nugent. This is Dr. Shu. He's the attending. Okay. I would like it to be removed, the bullet. Yes, or healed. Come elective, we take out. That's better. What do you mean? I can understand. What do you mean? You mean later on, when he's 50, when he can't heal as good? No, no. No, you do it when he's young. And this is a pretty standard, not a taking out at this point. Okay. This, this is not this standard one. to me. Let's work with the doctor, OK? Obviously, it's an emotional scenario, but, you know, he's lucky. Does this hurt? This doesn't hurt? Only on the right side. Only on the right side. Where? Here? Yeah, I do. The trauma team is taking the patient up to the OR right now. They're going to see where he's bleeding from and then also set his leg. Open your eyes. Have we gotten a blood pressure yet? Where's his vitals? I got a saw. Where, we have no pressure, no oxygen saturation. What was his last documented pressure that someone saw? So I got 70 pounds. 70 pounds? So Let's start went, packing him for the OR. If you don't absolutely love this job, if this isn't the only thing that you could see yourself doing, please choose something else. There's not a day that's gone by where I have ever regretted making this choice. Did someone activate the transfusion protocol? Does he have Thank a pulse? You. He's had a pulse. He's been he doesn't now. Excuse me. All right, come on, get him over. We gotta start testing no, no, pressures. No, no, no. He's about to die. He's got no pulse. Go. Start after you start after me. Get the cross over here. Here, here. Yeah, he's coding. Get him in a knife. He's gotta open his chest. Open him up. Open him up. Oh. All right, something's working. Because he's bleeding again. Can you hold this arm, please? Have you got the heart? Can you get a foley into his atrium? Yeah, yeah. He has a pulse. It's not possible. His heart's not beating. That's for last night. We'll tie that together in a minute. Do you want more? No, just tie to this. Just tie to this. There is a little bit of a gift in trauma that you're dealing with a patient who may very well already be dying or dead when you get to them. From that point forward, anything you do is going to be an improvement from where they're at. Give me that one of Epi. Epi going into the heart. Heart's beating. Heart's back. 
He was found lying down with a knife in his chest. We managed to bring this guy back from an absolutely mortal injury. OK, we got a pulse. We have a hole in the left ventricle anterior. We couldn't see any of the vessels. He's got stab wounds, well, maybe five or six. He, he was dead when he opened his chest. He had no vital signs, nothing. So we opened him up. His heart was a completely flaccid sack. Our repair is of, of dubious quality, really. Want your fingers, sir? Big scissors. Needle back. All right, tie that one. Can we get him ready for uh, transport? He's alive. They were going to bring him up here gradually and explore him in the elevator. No pressures. Got him on the bed, started chest compressions, so cracked, his cracked his chest, chest, cracked his chest, found the hole, whip stitched, put a Satinsky on it, whip stitched it shut. Where was the hole? Right ventricle, right across the front, about that big. We're trying to get him all packed up. We're going to get him onto this bed that Dr. Tao here has gotten ready for us. We're getting him down to the ICU. First day on red. Second week. Second, oh, second week. The first, like, legit thing. It doesn't get much more legit than this. We're good, we're good, let's go. Oh, pressure's great. <laughs> it is, it's the best it's been in like an hour. Uh, we're gonna go see a 25-year-old girl who uh, developed a mysterious pain in the left side of her abdomen after working out, and she's not really sure what it's from. Since I've never been sick before, really been to hospital, it's weird to have something, you know, inside me that the doctors don't know what it is and nothing else is wrong with me. It's just this little three millimeter something near my colon that's causing the pain, so. So we admitted her last night. We kept her in the hospital overnight and the pain hasn't gotten any better. She hasn't gotten any better. Um, so we're a little bit puzzled what this could be. Hey guys, how are you? This is my boss. So you got this thing in there and we're not exactly sure what it is. Yeah. But it's bothering you, so we got to get to the bottom of it. We want to prep her tonight, clean out her colon. We want to start with a colonoscopy. After that, we'll put a camera in through your belly button. If it's relatively feasible for us to take it out that way, then I'd like to remove the whole thing. That way we can just send it to pathology and they can tell us exactly what it is. OK. I think it's nothing. I think it could be just a, a blood clot or a hematoma or a little cyst. Stuff happens. Stuff happens, randomness. But I don't know what this is. And more importantly, Dr. Barry, who's been doing this for a whole lot longer than I've even been alive, he doesn't know what it is either. When we see a mass in the colon in a person this young, we become concerned that this might be cancer. Okay. Don't cry. Come on, don't cry, sweetie. Don't cry. So today, they were putting a camera through my belly button. There's something um, near my colon. They don't know what it is. I really hope this is a benign thing. I think the probability is really high that it is a benign thing. But, um, Young patients with masses, you're always a little bit worried that it could be cancerous or headed in that direction. <laughs> you doing okay? Yeah. You ready? Yep. We're going to put a camera in through our belly button and see if we can find it. If it's stuck to the colon, we may have to open her up and do a colon resection. Can have the room turned down temperature-wise a little bit? She's young and healthy. That all looks very nice. Huh. Well, we found our culprit. So my question is, can we peel this off the colon? Possibly. The mass was easy to find, but it's more adherent to the colon than we had hoped. And we're concerned because it's solid that it's a tumor. It could be just about anything. You got a baggie? We'll feel a lot better once we know what this thing is and that it won't ever come back. We did a great operation. The question is, what is it? Which hopefully we're finding out right now. OK. I think they're on a preliminary basis saying it's not malignant, but they're scratching their heads. All right, we can say benign. Preliminarily. Preliminarily. We're going to go out and talk to the family, give them the good news. So uh, we removed a small section of her colon. A very rubbery, firm mass. They're saying that it does not show any malignancy on a preliminary basis. Any idea what caused this? No. You, you've never seen anything like this? No. There's a lot of good news here. There's a lot of good news here. <sighs> We're OK. <laughs> She'll be OK. I know. She'll be all right. OK. I think it's pretty damn cool. It's the best job in the world.
These are the low fat wild blueberry Otis Spunkmeyer muffins. You oh. are the man. This is what surgical residents live off of Dude, during the third year. I, <laughs> I've had about a thousand of those in my career, I think. It's like going to a five star <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> in your mind, Elliot. Hi, baby. How, How are, are you? you? Hi, Michelle. I'm good. How are you? Uh, we're going to see Aldred Simpson. She's a 75 year old woman with stomach cancer, and we're going to try to remove her tumor so that she can eat normally again. It's so nice to see you again. You ready for today? Yeah. You know what's coming, right? Yeah. Cool. Everything's gonna be awesome. Everything's gonna be great. We'll take you back there in about 20 minutes or so. All right. I'll see you in the operating room. She's such a sweetheart. This is a really awesome Jamaican family, right? Are her kids here? Yes. Yeah, see that. I'm Sebastian. I'm the chief resident on the service. Oh, I'm going to be helping Lieberman do the operation. Probably start the operation about half an hour, 45 minutes. Thank you. So you're in charge, huh? Well, I'm not. I can tell already. Uh, <laughs> I'll see you later, my friend. Whenever I see a family like that show up, where there's five kids in the waiting room, because their mom's having surgery and the kids flew in from Florida, and they, you know they're all here and they're all interested and they're all really like motivated to be involved. That always makes me so happy, because I know that she's going to do well. Jackson, please call the front desk. This is an escort to urgent care. Escort is needed in urgent care. Knife, please, two lap pads. Feel here, you still feel disease here. Sometimes you really, really want a patient to do well, but some things are beyond our control, and they're beyond what we doctors can fix. Take a feel all along here. I mean, yeah, that's it's terrible. just nodal disease all the way there, so we're not going to get all the disease out. So I think what we should do is bypass her. Because I don't think we can cure her, you know, by any means. What do you think about that? I think that sucks. Yeah. After we got all the way around the stomach and removed all the other tissue around it, when we looked behind it, there was just a string of cancer going along the blood vessels that go to the stomach all the way down to where the aorta is. Uh, Operation's over. Six, nine. Okay. Uh, I'm not happy. In layman's terms, the cancer couldn't be taken out. She's probably going to die with the cancer in there. I told her, I was like, everything's going to be fine. We're going to fix you today, you know? And I really believe that. So you understand that, the, that we couldn't take the cancer out. And the reasons we couldn't take it out is because it was stuck to things that it wouldn't have been safe for us to, to remove. If we could have taken it out, believe me, we would have. We tried really, really hard. We did literally everything we could. Because I know you love me, right? I do. Uh, kind of a lot. Uh, and you're the sweetest. I first love, right? <laughs> <laughs> OK, sweetie. Hi, sir. We're from the burn team. Hey, man, how are you? Today? We're going to admit you. We're also going to have the eye doctor see you to make sure that your eyes aren't involved. Is your vision? I have very blurred vision. My you have very okay. blurred vision right yes. now? Yes, ma'am. All right, we'll see you upstairs, OK? I'm sorry this happened to you. Thank Looks you. like we're just going to have to make a bed for this guy. Fiona, hey, it's Carla. Listen, I'm in the ER, and we have a, we have a, a gentleman with a bad bird. Are you coming downtown tonight, to Bond Street? Yeah. I haven't seen Vanessa in five days. Who's Vanessa? I don't know. Two years ago, we walked together. We're in a church. Yeah, we really have. My wife is also a surgery resident. There were two renal arteries, and they sewed them on, and then we transplanted the kidney into the pelvis. She's a year below me. We met in the program. So you did it laparoscopic. We did a la like a hand assist, left nephrectomy. Well, needless to say, she's a genius. Right? We took the kidney down, staple, staple. So he does the trans-abdominal approach, not the flank approach? I wouldn't say we just talk about work, but maybe being married to another surgeon is actually very convenient. Yes, trans-abdominal. And then you took it out and put and it back in? I took it out and fixed it and put it back in. So we're on our way to operate on a guy with uh, cancer. He's got cancer of his stomach um, right at the point where the esophagus meets the stomach. Just by coincidence, Vanessa is on the thoracic service. Being allowed to hang out with your best friend at work is lucky and wonderful. Yeah. Can I have a short tip on the movie? Yeah. I need this this way. Even if we're neck deep in surgery and we haven't seen each other for a day and a half, if I catch a glimpse of her, I, I know it'll be OK. We're looking good. Another stitch, another soap. We sewed together the stomach to the esophagus, so that connection is made. So I'm going to close the incision in the neck. So we're almost done. I'm a good surgeon. I don't know if you know this. 
What are you doing? I'm not sure I understand what we're Because you can't see so you're coming into posterior sheath where it desiccates? Yeah. Let go. God. Oh, my God. Nothing's worse than having a diva wife who's also in the OR with you. What do you think? Is that going to be good? Yeah. You right? Sorry. I have blood on my scrubs. Is that fresh? Yeah, that's from the chest tube. Multiple trauma on their way in three minutes. 